Hello everyone and welcome to the 2023 WIMJIG and NATO Countering Disinformation Challenge. My name is Reese O'Brien and I am the internal co-president of the William & Mary Global Innovation Challenge, or WIMJIG, a student-led organization that aims to promote interdisciplinary collaboration, provide applied learning opportunities, and mobilize young adults to tackle global challenges. In this eighth year of WIMJIG, we are honored to host our second competition in partnership with NATO headquarters. We would like to extend a warm thank you to those whose dedicated partnership and support has made this event possible, especially the wonderful NATO team in Brussels, including Robin El Khadi, those who reviewed and edited your case documents, everyone volunteering today as a judge or mentor, and the whole of government Center of Excellence staff at William & Mary. Today, we invite each of you to leverage your unique perspectives and experiences. This case competition will allow you to reach beyond what you have learned in the classroom to develop truly innovative solutions to eight pressing disinformation challenges faced by the NATO Alliance and beyond. While you will only spend a few short hours with us today, your ideas and solutions will be shared with the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence, CCDCOE, effectively bridging the gap between student minds and the policy world. Last year's solutions were recently published by the CCDCOE and we look forward to similarly promoting student solutions this year as well. Before we begin, a few logistical matters. You can join our conversation on social media by finding us at, at WIMJIG on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Our hashtag is hashtag WIMJIGXNATO. Be sure to check out NATO's social media as well. Please note that the opening and closing ceremonies and subsequent presentation sessions will be recorded. Portions of the recordings will be used to create a publicly available video summary of the competition. I would also like to extend a quick thank you to the Reeves Center for International Studies, the Disinfo Lab, and the William & Mary Law School. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Stephen Hansen, the Letty P. Evans Professor of Government at William & Mary. Greetings, I'm Steve Hansen, and I'm a professor of government here at William & Mary, and it's my distinct honor and privilege to welcome you all to the 2023 WIMJIC and NATO Countering Disinformation Challenge. We have students joining us literally from all around the globe today, uh, all through the United States, through Europe and beyond. And it is really exciting as acting director of William & Mary's Whole of Government Center of Excellence in National Security to be carrying on the work of our director, Dr. Kay Floyd, in engaging students here and around the world to put your brilliant minds to work in addressing pressing global challenges. And it's a particular uh, privilege to be able to work with our partners at NATO. We thank you very much for our years now of close partnership, and we hope that continues long into the future. Here at William & Mary, we have a long and distinguished history of focusing on national security issues. It really dates back all the way to our alumni, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and James Monroe, uh, who obviously were deeply involved in the early establishment of American foreign policy. But to this day, we continue that tradition uh, with uh, alumni like our Chancellor Robert Gates, former Secretary of Defense, and many others who work closely with the U.S. government and governments around the world. So this event is very important to us and fits well with our strategic plan. This particular topic is of utmost importance and incredibly timely. The question of disinformation and how to combat it is one that's, I know, a major concern throughout the U.S. government as we speak and through governments uh, of allied and friendly nations throughout the world. And countering this particular problem immediately forces us to address a very sticky dilemma for free societies, which is how on earth are we going to preserve an environment for the free flowering of information and ideas that's vital to an inclusive and democratic society, and not at the same time open up the floodgates of our channels of communication to vile hate speech, to disinformation, to all sorts of falsehoods about world affairs uh, that unfortunately are becoming the steady diet of so many consumers of online information these days. And what on earth do we do when these threats are coupled with the newest technologies, the deep fake ability and AI generated texts, which allow us very cheaply to generate images of real people, supposedly saying things that they never would have said in real life in ways which could be quite incendiary or very difficult to, to debunk. So how do we tackle this? 
Part of the problem clearly is the decline in trust in the traditional gatekeeping mechanisms and institutions that we used to rely on to separate fact from falsehood, expertise from just uh, people's impressions. And I think part of the problem is that when the internet first developed, there was such a rush of enthusiasm in academia too, but in society as a whole, for all the possibilities that would open up for the free sharing of information around the globe, the possibility of coordinating with others in collective action and civic society that were close to people so frequently around the world prior to the invention of the internet. And some of those uh, hopes have really come true. Uh, the dream of global communication about democratic values is clearly one of the benefits of the internet. But perhaps in retrospect, we did a poor job of explaining at that particular moment why we still needed some kinds of gatekeeping and some kinds of expertise so that you could tell on the internet what was worth trusting and what wasn't. We think here of professional journalists in the so-called mainstream media, already used too often as a pejorative term, professional experts and their associations, and of course, for all of us here, universities themselves, which unfortunately have also fallen under deep suspicion, especially in the last few years in this country and others. We did a poor job of explaining why having at least two independent sources of news was an important check before one rushed publication or uh, rushed ideas to print. We did a poor job of explaining why the training given to professional experts in disciplines like the law or medicine really is vital uh, for their understanding of the deeper problems of discerning fact from fiction. And perhaps we've done a bad job of explaining to the ordinary person why hiring a faculty at universities takes so long, why there's so many years of training and uh, the obtaining of degrees that are necessary before we certify our faculty as experts. The result is that all through the world, there's deep distrust in all of these traditional gatekeepers. And of course, none of them exist on the internet as a whole. Uh, there, you can rush things to print immediately. You don't need to worry about the degrees or professional training that you've obtained, and university status counts for very little. And so that's part of the problem, clearly, is that the traditional gatekeepers are gone, and the information on the internet, social media, and more generally available uh, online is not vetted really in any way at all. And young generations may not know how to tell the difference between what's vetted and what, what isn't. This is equally a problem, and maybe even more so when we look at the way that artificial intelligence these days is being developed. The so-called training of AI happens through the use of online sources. And to the extent that the mainstream sources that are vetted start being swamped by all the ones that are untrustworthy, AI itself and its algorithms will increasingly replicate the bad forms of information, the disinformation, the bias, the stereotypes about cultures and religions and the like. Right now, we have Wikipedia as a wonderful oasis that's the exception to that rule, still vetted carefully by online committed citizen er editors who really do their best to get rid of any disinformation that appears. But for how long will that particular institution be able to hold out against the tide? Uh, it's a mistake, I think, just to rely on Wikipedia being there forever. And Wikipedia itself obviously still wrestles with these issues. There's another point that I want to add uh, in this debate that I think is often lost, and that is when trust in the online information ecosystem breaks down and trust in existing institutions and gatekeepers is no longer in place, it ironically means that the last kind of trust that really still exists in politics is through direct personal loyalty and direct personal association. We trust only those we've known for a long, long time because we seemingly can't trust anything else we see on the net. The result of that is that, ironically, personalistic dictatorships have a collective action advantage over the mass of disorganized citizens in democracies who are relying on some kinds of trustworthy information to coordinate around values that matter to the public. Leaders like Putin or Xi invest a lot in disinformation, both money and time. And the reason they do that is that to the extent they can worsen the problem of trust and in information that exists in Western democratic and global democratic societies, they actually increase the advantage of the networks of personal loyalty that they've forged in their own countries. It's a critical advantage for authoritarian personalistic regimes vis-a-vis -vis democratic ones, which emerges in this particular era of deep fakes AI and internet disinformation. So there are real threats out there that we have to wrestle with, but there's also a huge amount of hope. And the reason for that hope is you. 
It's the students here, the young generation, the new voices that are emerging to deal with exactly this problem in ways which support democratic values and civic engagement. After all, the generation that you're part of is one which is deeply familiar with this problem, deeply comfortable with social media, ready to take on the high technology solutions that are necessary to provide backup for whatever kind of vetting we need to perform and to call out bad actors when they flood the internet with this information of the sort we've discussed. We are so excited and honored to be hosting you and your teams in tackling these problems directly because your solutions will be the ones which all of our governments are going to be able to look to as we come up with creative and innovative ways to stem the tide of disinformation that is threatening our democratic order as we speak. So again, let me close by welcoming you warmly to William & Mary, even if it's virtually. We uh, are excited to see what you come up with, and we at William & Mary are happy to follow up after WIMJIC is over to ensure that we support this important project in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hansen. It's an honor hearing from you today. Now, please welcome Dr. Teresa Longo, Associate Provost for International Affairs, and Executive Director of the Reeves Center for International Studies at William & Mary. Good morning, everyone. I'm Teresa Longo. Welcome to William & Mary, to the Reeves Room at William & Mary. I'd like to begin uh, my morning remarks with a shout out to the WIMJIC team, to the whole of government, government center of excellence, the Reeves Center for International Studies, the Dis DisInfo Lab, all at William & Mary, and the university as a whole, and everyone that supports this very exciting event. So first, let me say how excited I am about the content of this event. Think about it. We have undergraduates from around the world working together trying to solve urgent global issues. And just to give you an idea of the way those issues are framed, we have some very exciting streams uh, of organization around the problem-solving agenda. They are artificial intelligence, public health, Russia-Ukraine war, gender-based violence, terrorism, climate change and climate security, climate change and clean energy, and human rights. What could be more pressing, more urgent than any of these concerns? And we have the students in front of us who are ready, prepared, willing and smart enough to propose the sol solutions to these compelling matters. Again, welcome and good luck today. Thank you, Dr. Longo, for your kind words and continued support of WIMJIG. Now for a case introduction by Shraddha Dinesh from Disinfo Lab and Sophia Labu from WIMJIG. Good morning. My name is Shraddha Dinesh and I'm a co-director of Disinfo Lab, the first undergraduate-led disinformation think tank in the United States located here at William & Mary. We are extremely excited to be supporting this competition today. In this challenge, teams will develop novel solutions to counter disinformation, which we define as deliberately false information that is created with and shared with the intent to deceive. NATO has long recognized the critical threat posed by disinformation for its ability to permeate nearly every domestic and global challenge. Given the wide scope of this topic, we have separated the challenge into eight streams. Each team will form an innovative solution to address this information in one of the following streams. Artificial intelligence, clean energy, climate security, human rights, public health, sexism and gender-based violence, and the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. For each stream, we have provided a case document including an overview and background of the issue, relevant current events, and a summary of existing solutions and their shortcomings. These case documents are not exhaustive, but rather should prime each team and their development of solutions. My name is Sophia Lebu, and I am WIMJIC's research director. During the competition, teams will consult with mentors to develop their solutions, which they will present to a panel of judges. Teams will submit a PDF slide deck with up to five slides, as well as a 150 word project summary. Additionally, winning teams will be invited to give a three-minute presentation of their solutions during the event's closing ceremony. Winning teams will also be invited to develop a one-page infographic on their solutions after the competition. We are so excited to see the creativity you all can bring to your presentations. 
We have an incredible slate of judges and mentors who have so graciously volunteered their time to help this put on this competition today. On behalf of the entire WIMJIC staff, I would like to thank the judges and mentors for being with us. Thank you, Shada and Sophia. My name is Dorothy Gao, and I'm the co-event director of today's WIMJIC and NATO Counter and Disinformation Challenge. Before we send you off to respective streams to start the mentoring sessions, here are a few logistical details to make your experience with us as smooth as possible. First, everything you need can be found in the event packet. This includes the casebook, schedule, stream, Zoom links, and more. As a friendly reminder, the schedule operates under Eastern time, so please convert it to your own time zone. To reach the event packet, check your email or find it in the chat. Second, join Slack. Slack is the main mode of communication for this event. If you have not joined Slack, you risk missing crucial information throughout the competition. We will be updating Slack over the next few hours. Information can be found in the event packet. Third, after the opening ceremony, join your respective stream Zoom rooms and enter your team breakout room. Participants will stay in the team breakout room throughout the mentoring sessions. You will be required to work th with your mentors during the assigned time periods, and please use the rest of the time to work on your slide deck and a 150 word summary. Mentors will be moving across the different team breakout rooms. Fourth, please submit your slide deck, five slides max, and your 150 word summary by 11.05 Eastern time. Remember, the last slide of your presentation should include the summary and the optional content, like a MIM or infographic, that showcase your idea. The link to the project submission form can also be found in the event packet. You will have to log into a Google account for your submission. Fifth, we will close all the breakout rooms by 11.05 Eastern Time and begin the presentations. Teams will watch others' presentations within their stream main room. Please mute yourself and be respectful of the other presenters and be ready to present. Six, after all presentations, remember to join us back on the webinar link for the closing ceremony by 1.15 p.m., where we will hear from our NATO speaker and the winners will be announced. The webinar will open approximately at 1 p.m. ahead of our start. Lastly, please feel free to reach out to the WIMJIC staff located in your own stream or reach out to us on Slack or email if you have any questions. The competition has now begun. Thank you and good luck.